What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about something called a chatterbait. Now if you're new to fishing, you might not have heard of a chatterbait, but today we're going to go in depth on specific chatterbaits. We're going to talk about sizes. We're going to talk about trailers, colors, where and when you might throw a chatterbait. So let's get to it. All right, so a chatterbait, if you're new to this, I'm gonna explain what exactly a chatterbait is. It's a your standard jig without a weed yard with a blade on the front of it that just chatters in the water, gives you a good vibration. Now, today we're gonna to talk about three main chatterbaits that I like to use and one other chatterbait that I'll have to explain later on in this video when I use it and why I use it. So the first one I'm going to talk about is a Z-Man Jackhammer Chatterbait. I like to throw a half ounce 90% of the time. Um, there are certain times I do go to a 3 8 if I'm, you know, wanting to downsize on my line. Maybe I'm wanting a little bit smaller of a package and I'm up there really shallow. But 90% of the time, I'm going to go with a half ounce jackhammer. Now, trailer wise, there's a ton of trailers on the market now, but there's only a handful that I like to throw. Your main style is going to be just a standard swim bait. This happens to be a Strike King Rage Swimmer, and it's a 3.75. And it pairs up really nicely with it with the jackhammer. It's a full size profile if you're looking to go more bait fish oriented. And I'll rig this up real quick so you can see it. But this bait, this trailer gives it a really nice profile in the water. It swims really well. And the only thing with a, with a swim bait, with a paddle tail trailer on a chatterbait that you have to look out for is, if you've got a swim bait back there that's got a lot of movement, it will actually interfere with the blade. And you don't want that in your chatterbait. You want your blade and your trailer moving at the same speed. If you've got your blade moving slower than your trailer it'll mess up the action of the bait so you've got to really look out for that when you select certain trailers another trailer i like to use by bid bite is the kamikaze swim on trailer and i've got one right here out it's a more slender profile trailer and it's got these split tails on the end almost like a spinnerbait trailer would be and what's unique about this trailer is when you swim it in the water instead of the whole trailer swimming together these two little legs will actually swim opposite of each other giving it a really really nice action in the water and it doesn't impede the blade of that chatterbait the last one I like to throw on the full-size jackhammer is the Yami, Yamamoto Zeiko. This is what 80% of the people like to use now. It's got a ribbed tail section and it's just got a forked tail on it. And in the water, this has a nice, just slow action to it. And it, like I said before, it doesn't impede on that blade of your chatterbait. Now, the next chatterbait or vibrating jig that I like to throw is the Mini Max. And this one is the Mini Max right here. The only difference in your standard jackhammer chatterbait versus the Mini Max is the size. You've still got a stout hook in it. It's, it's a small hook, but it's still a stout hook. You can still use this on 15, 17 pound line. This bait I do like to throw in the 3 8 ounce, but I will still, if I'm fishing just a little bit deeper or um, if I wanna fish just a little bit slower, I'll go to the half ounce. And what makes this bait nice is when everybody else is throwing your full profile, 
chatterbait, you need to be giving this guy a try. It's just a smaller profile, still has a tremendous amount of vibration in the water, same great action, it's just in a smaller profile. And I like to use some of the same trailers as the standard chatterbait, but what you end up having to do is get like this mid bite kamikaze swim on I talked about earlier. You do have to trim them down. But they also make one, they make a smaller bid bite trailer. This is the 4.25. I'm thinking the smaller one is a 3.25. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I'll link everything below in the description that I'm talking about here today. Colors, sizes, all of that. So you'll be able to go in the description and see everything that I'm talking about. But I'll, I'll read this up for you so you can see the, the mini max. It's just an amazing bite size profile. And this, this Mini Max is quickly becoming one of my personal favorites. Um, this just happens to be a fire crawl color, but you throw a shad color or your bluegill color, I promise you, you'll get bites on that. The other main uh, vibrating jig that I throw is what they call a stealth blade, same by Z-Man. The only difference in this one is instead of your metal blade on the front, this has a clear plastic material on the front. And this in the water compared to the other chatterbaits, this one's going to have a much subtle, you know, tighter action in the water compared to those other bigger chatterbaits. And when you're on a clear body of water, or highly pressured fish this is the chatterbait that i'd go to and the trailer does matter more on this bait versus those other baits because you don't have as much action so what i like to throw is either the net bait little spanky it's just a little three inch paddle tail or a really good one that a lot of people aren't throwing anymore is your zoom split tail spinnerbait trailer it's real thin and this trailer just does whatever the front of that chatterbait's doing so it's not going to impede on that chatterbait at all and i'll read this one up but the other thing about this trailer that i like is if you're one of those guys that like to give your bait a lot of action with the rod tip like when you're just straight retrieving that bait and you want to snap that rod and make that bait dart, this trailer lets that bait dart a ton. And it's just an amazing little finesse chatterbait, if you will. So the last chatterbait I'm going to talk about, and then I'm going to throw in a little sneak trailer that I have found to be very, very deadly. This z-man came out with i believe it was first of last year this is the bid blade same same big strong hook hand tied skirt but it's an oversized blade see there's the comparison on a normal jackhammer versus the big blade and if you remember throwing your big spinner baits with a big Colorado blade and it's just don't 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 this is the same deal this, this is one that you're gonna throw out there and your whole your rod tips just gonna be dancing it just really really pushes some water and I like this one in those muddy muddy water conditions those fish are up there real shallow and you want to throw something big and really get their attention this is the chatterbait you need to throw. And I usually go ahead and put a full size swim bait on it because you're not, you're not gonna impede on that big blade. Now, most of these chatterbaits are like you seen before, are shad imitators like these, but you've also can throw this to imitate bluegill or even 
crawfish. And the trailer I like to throw on the back of it is a net bait pocket slim. It's a four inch bait. It's got big claws on the back. I'll rig this one up, let you see it. It's really hard to find a trailer that will imitate a crawfish or a bluegill on the back of your chatterbait because of that blade moving. And th sometimes the uh, uh, crawl style trailer doesn't have the correct action because it's behind that blade. But what's nice about this trailer is there's it behind that jackhammer. These big flat uh, legs on this trailer, when it's behind that chatterbait, they'll just start dancing everywhere. And for, for whatever reason, this bait will just randomly throw a leg out and then come back in and sink. And then you'll be swimming along, give it a little twitch, and those feet will go out and do something random. And that's just something that's critical in drawing stripes is just a abnormal action when you really don't have to impede much to make that bait do it. So that, if you're looking for a crawl imitator trailer for a chatterbait, give that one a try. It's the Netbait Pocket Slim. So now that we went through my three or four main bladed jigs that I like to throw, we're gonna talk about your rod and line and where you might throw this chatterbait. So 90% of the time, I'm gonna throw 17 pounds straight fluorocarbon on all of my bladed jigs. Only when I'm gonna throw either a stealth blade or maybe the mini max, I might drop down to 15 pound line. Or if I'm gonna go with the regular chatterbait and I'm gonna drop down to a 3 8 ounce, I will throw 15. Now, your big blade, you're always gonna throw 17 or even 20 pound line. Just most of the time this big blade is a, at least a half ounce, if not a three quarter ounce. So rod I like to throw is anything from a seven foot to a seven four medium heavy. And you want a rod that isn't too, too sensitive. And what I mean is when you're reeling the chatterbait along and you, if you have a rod that's real sensitive, you'll feel that bite and you'll want to snatch it away from them. So I, I like a rod that's got a slower tip to it. So I'm not, you know, trigger happy on wanting to set that hook. I want a, I want a rod that's just going to load up almost, almost like a stouter crankbait rod, but you still want a medium heavy. So when I feel that bite, I'm, I'm slower to get into them and I really give that fish time to get that bait and get that hook set. And where I throw a chatterbait is everywhere. All times of the year, they, they will eat a chatterbait. Docks, grass lines, around wood, on riprap, they will eat a chatterbait all the time. But my favorite times of year to throw a chatterbait is pre-spawn and after the spawn. Um, when the fish start moving up, I like to go and, and throw, you know, your reds and your your crawl patterns. And then when the fish get done spawning, and even even in the shad spawn and, it, and in the fall, you start throwing your whites up there on edges of grass lines or skipping up under docks, anything like that you need to be throwing a chatterbait. Just think about anywhere that you would have thrown your spinnerbait in the past, throw your chatterbait. So thank you guys for watching this video on chatterbaits. If there's any questions you have, please drop a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer them. So now that we went through my three or four main bladed jigs that I like to throw, we're gonna talk about your rod and line and where you might throw this chatterbait. So 90% of the time, I'm gonna throw 17 pounds straight fluorocarbon on all of my bladed jigs. Only when I'm gonna throw 
either a stealth blade or maybe the mini max i might drop down to 15 pound line or if i'm going to go with the regular chatterbait and i'm going to drop down to a 3 8 ounce i will throw 15. now your big blade you're always going to throw 17 or even 20 pound line just most of the time this big blade is a at least a half ounce if not a three quarter ounce so rod i like to throw is anything from a seven foot to a seven four medium heavy and you want a rod that isn't too too sensitive and what i mean is when you're reeling the chatterbait along and you if you have a rod that's real sensitive you'll feel that bite and you'll want to snatch it away from them so i, I like a rod that's got a slower tip to it so i'm not you know trigger happy on wanting to set that hook i want to on a rod that's just going to load up almost almost like a stouter crankbait rod but you still want a medium heavy so when i feel that bite i'm i'm slower to get into them and i really give that fish time to get that bait and get that hook set and where i throw a chatterbait is everywhere all times of the year though they, they will eat a chatterbait docks grass lines around wood on rip route they will eat a chatterbait all the time but my favorite times of year to throw a chatterbait is pre-spawn and after the spawn um when the fish start moving up i like to go and, and throw you know your reds and your your crawl patterns and then when the fish get done spawning and even even in the shad spawn and it, and in the fall you start throwing your whites up there on edges of grass lines or skipping up under docks anything like that you need to be throwing a chatterbait just think about anywhere that you would have thrown your spinnerbait in the past throw your chatterbait so thank you guys for watching this video on chatterbaits if there's any questions you have please drop a comment down below and i'll be happy to answer them thank you guys for watching and tune in for the next video